All right. Thank you, Bronk. All right. I'd like to thank Rocky for inviting me to talk a little bit about some work we've done with uh, liquid calcium product. In the program, it says liquid lime, and that's something a little bit different than the product that I'm going to be talking about today. And I'll, I'll show you a little bit of data as we go on. So the title of my presentation is Liquid Calcium Boon or Boondoggle. First couple of slides are, are more of just a reminder of how important soil pH is, and then a little bit about uh, soil chemistry. So soil acidity is still, after all these years, a major factor in limiting forage production in the southeastern United States. One of the major things it does is limit nutrient availability, and you can see that in the chart on the right. It also reduces nitrogen fixation in legumes. Increases uh, elemental toxicity in the soil as the pH gets too low. Reduces cation exchange capacity as it gets low in the soil. And um, the other thing that we're, when we're talking about soil health and regenerative grazing, it can impact soil microbial communities in the soil too. And I found a reference from 1984 in the lime, uh, soil acidity and liming uh, monograph on that. And then more recently um, in uh, uh, forages the science of grassland agriculture, um, Barker and Collins referred to reduced earthworm activity as soil pH decreases. So it has a major impact on production and, and again, nutrient cycling within grazing systems. This is kind of a, a, a throwback to your soil chemistry days, but I think we all need to be reminded of, of what the lime reaction is. So we start out and we put on ag lime, which is calcium carbonate, never 100%, but some, somewhere between 65 and, and 80% usually. We add water from the soil and that it dissolves. And that gives us a, a calcium ion or a cation, and then it gives us bicarbonate and hydroxide from this uh, lime dissolving. And then we add hydrogen ions in the soil. Remember, the soil acidity is actually free hydrogen ions in the soil. So we add hydrogen ions to this uh, reaction, and we form water and carbon dioxide. That's the lime reaction right there. What I want you to notice is calcium is there. But calcium doesn't neutralize soil acidity. It's the hydroxide and the bicarbonate that actually interact with those hydrogen ions that, that cause soil acidity to be neutralized in the soil. This is important. I know most of you haven't seen this since your soil chemistry class, but understanding this is, is really critical um, to interpreting the data that I'm going to show you in a minute. There's um, other sources other than ag lime to, to neutralize soil acidity. I'm not going to go through all these, but I just wanted to throw them up. And then there's some sources that we can add calcium with that do not neutralize soil acidity. Things like gypsum, calcium sulfate, and calcium chloride. And that's kind of the one that we're going to talk about today uh, with this ProCal and, uh, and uh, an another form of liquid calcium. What I want you to notice is that in these reactions, there's two hydrogen ions to start with. And when we end the, re the reaction, there's two hydrogen ions left, which means we did not neutralize any soil acidity. And that's, that's pretty important to understand. There's a, a company out there called Agritech that's um, a pretty aggressive at marketing their products. And they have uh, two products that they're pushing towards forage and livestock producers. One's called uh, Advanced Cal and one called ProCal. And their primary ingredient in these products is calcium chloride. Okay, so not, not limestone, but calcium chloride. And they have a very aggressive Facebook marketing campaign. So we get questions all the time about these products. And um, it says, low pH, try ProCal, raise your pH fast, cheaper than lime. Sounds good, right? I mean, I would do it. You only have to put two gallons on an acre. And, um, and, and they love client testimonials. The problem with client testimonials is usually when, when farmers use something, they've decided they need to make a change. And when they make a change, they don't change one thing, but they change half a dozen things at the same time. And then they give one thing credit for it. 
And that's a kind of a problem with the testimonials. So the, the one thing that this company doesn't like is, is replicated data. They're not a big fan of that. So, so the objective of this project that we did was to evaluate the efficacy of liquid calcium as a liming agent. And um, in, I, I struggled with using the word evaluate because this is not really a high science study. It's more like demonstrating the efficacy of liquid calcium as a liming agent. So we, we did a couple studies. And uh, the first one was a field study evaluating liquid calcium, ag lime, pelleted limestone. Um, as liming materials. I'll just tell you a little bit about the methods. We did this in 2021. Um, it's a random complete block design, so it had four replications. Um, we had 16 locations in Kentucky, so we didn't do it in one place. We did it in 16 different places, and each place was a replicated um, experiment. Lot size was five by five. Our treatments were control treatments, so no lime. We had advanced cow, which is the uh, liquid calcium product, uh, at five gallons per acre. The recommended range was two to five gallons per acre. And then we had a, a pelleted limestone applied at two tons per acre. Um, and we adjusted it. It was an RNV or relative neutralizing value 83. We adjusted it so we were actually applying two tons of 100% RNV. And then we had ag lime at two tons, and we adjusted it again, so we're applying two tons of 100% RNV. And then we measured soil pH at zero, three, and 12 months after application. So no high science here. It's more of a, a demonstration product, but it's pretty important when, when companies are really pushing products like this on producers. So these were just our locations. We had them across the Commonwealth of Kentucky. 16 different locations. We analyzed the data using PROC GLM from SAS and separated means using a, a Fisher's protected least significant difference. So this was the initial pH at the start of the study. Uh, and this is averaged over all 16 locations. So the initial pH was somewhere around 5.6 to 5.7 at the beginning of the study. And there was no difference between any of the treatments, as you would expect, because we hadn't applied anything yet, right? So this is three months after we uh, made the initial application. So already at three months, we're seeing a significantly higher soil pH with pelleted limestone and agricultural limestone. Uh, the control was not significantly different from liquid calcium at three months. This is 12 months after the initial application. And the control and liquid calcium were not different. That means the, the liquid calcium was not increasing soil pH. The pelleted limestone and the ag limestone were not different from each other, and they were both significantly higher than the uh, control and the liquid calcium. When we looked at the uh, difference in uh, soil pH at the end of the study, we saw that um, the control was right here. It had a, a variance of about 0.1 pH units from the original. Liquid calcium was a little bit less than that. Pelleted limestone had raised and ag lime had raised uh, somewhere around six to seven tenths of a pH unit in 12 months. Applied, surface applied to the field. So they're working and uh, the control and the liquid calcium were, were the same. So we did a, a second study, it was kind of a com companion study, and it was a, a lab incubation evaluating liquid calcium, ag lime, and pelleted limestone in, in their ability as liming materials. Um, so this was done in the laboratory. It's a random complete block design. We had three replications. We used four ounce specimen cups. Um, our treatments were the same as our field study. We had advanced cal at five gallons per acre pelleted limestone and ag limestone at two tons per acre. And they were all adjusted to um, the last two to 100% RNV, two tons. Um, we measured soil pH at zero, three, six, and 12 months after uh, application. And then we analyzed the data using PROC GLM, separated means using Fisher's protected least significant difference. 
And, and this is kind of the summary table from that, that study. And I'm not going to go through all the dates, but at the beginning, I just want to show you all the treatments were the same. Of course, 5.2 uh, was the initial soil pH. And when we skip ahead to 12 months, um, the control was 5.1, so within a tenth of where it started at, which you would expect. We didn't have any uh, treatment on that. Liquid calcium at the recommended rate of 5 gallons per acre had a pH of 4.98. So, um, so it was uh, essentially the same as the control. And uh, the pelleted limestone and the ag lime 12 months after uh, application was 6.2 and 6.26 um, soil pH. So they increased soil pH by about one, one unit in 12 months in this incubation study. So ag lime and pelleted limestone are working. Liquid calcium was, was not working. So just looking at a price comparison real quick, um, we, when we have a lime recommendation of two tons of um, lime per acre, 100% relative neutralizing value, we have to actually apply 2.6 tons of the ag lime because it has a 77% relative neutralizing value. And, and um, at $35 a ton applied, it would be about $90 an acre. Pelleted limestone had a slightly higher RNV, so we had to apply a little bit less of that 2.4 tons per acre. But the cost of pelleted limestone is really high. So $280 a ton, or about five bucks a bag. And, um, and that comes out to be $672 per acre. Cost prohibitive, right? Maybe on your, your, your wildlife spot or your garden spot, but but not, not realistic for a landscape scale application. And then we got an advanced callet, five gallons per acre, $30 a gallon, $150. So it's less than the pelleted limestone, except it didn't neutralize any soil acidity, right? <laughs> so at the end of the day, you know, this, this is not high science, and in, in I don't mean to talk about it that way, but. But at the end of the day, ag lime is the most cost-effective and, and effective product for neutralizing soil acidity. And, and this kind of data is important just to get producers not to use some of these products that are out there. So it kind of brings us back to the beginning. Is it a boon or a boondoggle? And I'm, I'm going to have to go with boondoggle. <laughs> so that, that's all I've got. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Four, four inches. Yeah, yeah. So, so Jimmy's comment was that it was interesting that the uh, rate of change for the agricultural limestone and the pelleted limestone was the same, and it was in this particular study. I'm not sure about other studies. Yes, there, there were significant differences. We're already starting to see a, a So here, here's three months and, and we didn't have a significant difference. It was 6.2 and 6.3. Right, right. There is a liquid, like a suspended or finely ground suspended limestone that's in essentially water, I guess, and you can apply it, but, but applying enough of it per acre is almost impossible. So, so even though it, it could neutralize at the rates they recommended that are probably not going to be effective for new, making real change in the soil pH. Rocky?
Okay. So, so Rocky said that, that even though you mix the liquid lime up, when, when you put it in the tank, it's going to settle out and you're going to get more on some areas and, and water on the other areas, essentially. Any other questions? Yes. So, so Alan's comment was um, a lot of people question whether we need to incorporate lime into the soil, and I, I think it's better if we can. But, but if you're in a pasture situation, you can't, or in a no-till situation, you really don't want to disturb that soil to incorporate lime. So it's it's still impacting change in that upper four inches fairly quickly, a, a pH unit in, in 12 months. I better turn it over to Brett. All right. Thank you.